Yo, 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 yo. If they know, they know. It's your boy Smoke News TV, man. We back here with another video, but this time we in Philly. Yeah, y'all heard me. We in Philly. We got to talk about this old memory lane because somebody from state property, if y'all know who state property is, that's the, that's the group that used to be down with on Rockefeller. If y'all don't know who the, who the heck they, everybody knows who state property is. Everybody know who Beanie Single is. Well, Oskino from the state property group went on a Say Cheese interview and he had a few few things that he said and it kind of caught my attention. I want to talk about it. Yeah, that part. So before we start, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you keep your notification bell on <laughs> and share the video. Most importantly, smash the like button. It's right there. It's free. It ain't going to cost or hurt you, man. So I seen this old Skino interview with Say Cheese. And he must have, I think Say Cheese dropped it today or yesterday, or whatever, but we're going to get to it. And um, if anybody remember the, um, a little situation happened in the early 2000s when Beanie Siegel had to go away, you know, go do a little bit of few time, a little bit of few years in, in jail. But there's always a but, that part, pause. There's always a but, like Oskino said in his interview. The judge was giving Beanie Siegel another opportunity, but it was going to be on the hands of Jay-Z. Not me that Jay-Z got to hold his hands and be in the house with him and all that. Ah, ah, ah. Come on, we're not talking about that. You just got to make sure your artist, at that time, he was definitely one of your hottest artists. He always went crazy for you. And I'm lying. We're talking about Beanie Mac and Beanie Single. Basically, Beanie, Beanie Siegel ended up going to jail. And we're going to talk about this. And, it's, and I felt like Jay was wrong. Oskino well, felt like Jay was wrong. Everybody felt like Jay was wrong at that time. This before social media and all this, y'all. We talking early 2000s now. Because I clearly remember when Beanie Siegel had to go in do that time. And then after that, when he came home, Rockefeller was already gone by then. It was already done. He had to pick a side by the time, by the time he came home. So before we start, man, smash that like button, man. Subscribe to the channel. Let me get this copyright fair use disclaimer. You can find that in my description on my channel. Everything that I speak on is for educational entertainment purpose. Again, copyright fair use disclaimer. You can find that in my description on my channel. Everything that I speak on is for educational entertainment purpose. And the clips and videos I play are also owned by the original creators. So we got that out the way, man. And let's get straight to it because I, I got a lot to say about this. And we're going to go down with a few memory lane beef between Jay-Z and Beanie Siegel when he came home. Everybody think Jay-Z is this goddess. He don't make mistakes. He don't, he don't do nothing wrong. That's what everybody thinks sometimes about Hov. Now, remind you, this early 2000, Hov on top of the map. He on top of the rap game. So everything that Hov was saying in the early 2000, it was a go. People was believing it. They was blind. They wasn't believing Beanie. So now Oskino came to the light and brought this to the light because you know why? Oskino was in the courtroom that day. Let's get to Oskino. Shout out to Oskino, man. Shout out to State Property, man. Let's get straight to it. Make sure you smash that like button. You see that like? Smash that like button. Hey. Let me tell you what I saw, bro. I saw, I came to court for beans, right? When he shot that, supposed to shot, allegedly shot somebody. Jay-Z got on the stand. They said, yo, are you going to be responsible for him if we let you go? Jay-Z said, no. Wait, nah. Wait, what year was this? Bro, I was there. I was there. My son was little, so this probably... Hold up, let's rewind. Let's go back and replay and hear what Oskino just said. Nah, what you talking about? Os Oskino was there. He was in the courtroom. Let's go back again. We ain't done. Okay. But don't let me tell you what I saw, bro. I saw, I came to court for beans, right? When he shot that, was that shot, allegedly shot somebody. Jay-Z got on the stand. They said, yo, are you going to be responsible for him if we let you go? Jay-Z said, no. Wait, nah, what, what year was this? Bro, I was there. I was there. My son was little, so this is probably like early 2000s. Yeah, I was, I was there. This, this, this ain't hearsay. This is me there in the courtroom. So wait, wait. The judge asked Jay-Z, would he be responsible Be for Beans? Be, if, would you be responsible? If we let him go today, would you be responsible for him? He said, no, no. Is this before the success or is this af after the Beans, Beans success? Beans, Beans, he was Beans. He was already did the songs and all that. Yeah, it was success, yeah, success already. And when he, I, I, I was just thinking like, what did he come to court for then? If you're not going to, if you're going to say that, like, 
Mind you, this is my thing. If I got a homie, all I got to do is say I'm responsible for him to get out. I'm saying it every time because if he kills somebody or something, they, they can't charge me with it. I mean, plus I got enough money to put him up somewhere anyway if, if I wanted to. But like, the judge basically just giving up, trying to give him an out to be able to get out. Just say, yeah. He said, no, bro. And I said, and nobody didn't say nothing. Nobody didn't flinch. I'm looking, mind you, I'm a jail nigga, so I'm looking like. We ain't done. We got another clip with Oskino. Now, y'all heard Oskino say, now, and I know I ain't tripping because I'm a street nigga too and all that. Ah, ah, ah. What did Oskino say with what I just said in the beginning of this, of this goddamn video? I just said that. The judge don't mean you got to hold hands and have him in your, in, by side by side of you. And all. No, he just said that, listen, we going to get Beanie Seagull another chance if you're responsible for him and ah, ah, ah. You got enough money to send that nigga off to a rehab, do anything, send him off somewhere so he could cool out for a minute and just make music. At that time, definitely, because Jay Hove was always Hove. He always had money, man. What are we talking about here? And that's one of your hottest artists at the time. And you said, no, sent him off to jail. By the time Beans came home, Rockefeller was already shaky. It was already breaking up. He had to pick and choose at that time. That's when he went with Dame. I'm lying. What are we talking about? But that's another story. You actually said no. And like Oskino said, judge ain't tell you to hold hands. You got money to have people watch over him or just have people just to make sure your artist don't get out of control so he won't go back to jail. That's your, that's your top artist on your label at that time. We talk about Beanie Siegel. He the hottest one in the whole goddamn Rockefeller besides Jay-Z. Am I lying? At that time, man, come on, everybody know Rockefeller at that time. It was Hov and Beanie, man. It was Jay-Z and Beanie Siegel, man. And them niggas had the truth, and Beanie had the whole gang behind him, the whole Philly. State property. That's one of them right here talking. Let's go back. We're going to play the next clip when he talking. Because I want this to marinate in y'all brain. Because Hov could do no wrong, according to, according to people sometimes. Jay-Z could do no wrong. Man, Jay-Z been doing wrong since way back, man. Go do y'all research with his best friend, D. Haven. D. Haven been on the... Man, listen, man. Anybody know D. Haven, y'all know what I'm talking about. D. Haven. His first album, Reasonable Doubt, was based on D. Haven life. Everything I speak on is a legend also. OJ, OG Wan, the one that's down with Rock Nation with his wife that's allegedly supposed to be, supposed to be a feds or whatever because she snitched out the... Everything I speak on is a legend. Snitched out the cartels, allegedly. But she was on the newspaper, so that's you can do your research on that. These are people that De Haven introduced him to, OG Wan. He done backstabbed people since De Haven. What are we talking about here? And there's no paperwork on De Haven saying that he snitched on Jay-Z. Wish Jay-Z put that on a song, throwing little subliminals at him because Ove had a voice at that time and still do. Let's get to it. Let's go back to Oskino, man. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Hov been doing niggas wrong since 9695. What we talking about here? But don't let me tell you what I saw, bro. I saw, I came to court for Beans, right? When he shot that, was that shot, allegedly shot somebody. Jay-Z got on the stand. They said, yo, are you going to be responsible for him if we let you go? Jay-Z said, no. Wait, nah. Wait, what year was this? Bro, I was there. I was there. My son was little, so this is probably like early 2000s. Yeah. I was, I was there. Listen, this, this, this ain't hearsay. This is me there in the courtroom. So wait, wait. The judge asked Jay Z, "Would he be responsible Be for beans? Be, would you be responsible if we let him go today? Would you be responsible for him?" He said, "No, no." Is this before the success, or is this af after the beans, beans success? He was, he was beans. He was already did the songs and all that. Yeah, he was success. Yeah, success already. And what he, I, I, I was just thinking, like, what did he come to court for then? If you're not going to, if you're going to say that, like, mind you, this is my thing. If I got a homie, all I got to do is say I'm responsible for him to get out. I'm saying it every time because. If he kills somebody, something, they, they can't charge me with it. I mean, plus I got enough money to put him up somewhere anyway if, if I wanted to. But like, the, the judge basically just giving up, trying to give him an out to be able to get out. Just say, yeah. He said, no, bro. And I said, and nobody didn't say nothing. Nobody didn't flinch. I'm looking, mind you, I'm a jail nigga, so I'm looking like. What? Nobody not appalled? Nobody not saying that? They, like it was normal? Well, you know, he don't, really, don't, he don't want to be responsible for a grown... Bro, he not gonna really have to. Be, the, the, it's nowhere in the law that say, well, if you say responsible for me, get out and do something. I'm gonna charge you. You can't be charged with nothing. You know what I'm saying? He just said no, like no, nigga, I'm not fucking with you. Like, so I just be like, yo, I always, I always thought maybe I was too street in my thinking. Maybe I'm just too street and I don't understand. Like, you know, 
him being, maybe he's being more responsible than I'm capable of knowing about. But I just looked at it like, man, these balls is different. My thing is, don't don't come to court for me if you're gonna say that. I mean, like, yo, yo you gonna let get O come out? Sure, wait, can, can, we we be responsible for O know, We let him out today? No. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck you come to court for? What you come to court for then? But I mean, what's the point of you getting on the stand? This was on the stand. I said, what the fuck was that? So you know, I left. So I just did not say nothing before because I didn't know if I was thinking correct. You know what I mean, exactly. Yo, smash that like button. Shout out to Say Cheese for this interview because we need it. Man, we gotta bring they gotta bring stories like this back from back in the day. Cause it's a lot of theories. A lot of people just said at that time, oh man, gotta hold his hand. I remember when people were saying that. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you share this video. If you haven't hit that like button, hit that like button. Do me that favor. I remember at that time when this happened, people was actually saying that. People in the streets. Where I'm from, everywhere. Oh, yeah, home. And then some people was like, yo, hold wrong. Because you got to understand, there wasn't no social media. So there was word of mouth, pause. There was a TV, pause, magazines, pause. That's what it was. And a lot of people didn't believe this right here, what Oskino said, because I remember this. People ain't believe this until Beanie Siegel came home from doing that jail time, and then he got mad at home and told the story. The same story that Oskino just said. Do y'all research? I was even trying to find that goddamn interview. There's so many interviews being Siegel did, I couldn't find it. But he brung that up too, saying that yo, the judge asked him, now nah, I mean, would you be responsible? I mean, and we're not talking about somebody holding hands with you and all this. Nah, like Oskino said, you got enough money to have niggas make sure your artist is good. Get him on a straight path, make sure he's good. He got state property, clothing, all this. And we're gonna get to hold when he when he brought all this up. Because I got a clip with whole talk. He talked about it one time. And after this, he never spoke about it no more. Speaking on Beanie Single. And he had a lot of points also what um, Jay-Z was saying. Jay-Z had a lot of points on what he was saying. Pause. We're going to get to that. But see, my thing is, you wrong for what you did, though, bro. I don't care what nobody said. You've been doing niggas wrong since D-Haven days. What we talking about? Shout out to D-Haven. Allegedly. And everything I speak on is alleged over here. But come on, bro. Ever since Beanie did that bid, he ain't never been the same, man. I'm lying. What we talking about here? And we're we going to get to this clip next because this will really rock Beanie Siegel to sleep, you might as well say. When another rapper came up to the jail that he was at, let this marinate in your brain right quick. We're going to get to this clip. Matter of fact, we, let, let's just get, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Smash, this, smash that like button. I don't hate Jay. That ain't that ain't what this about. I don't hate him, but damn, dog, that's how you feel. I feel as though you owe me a conversation. That's it. You too big to talk to me. You ate my mom oxtails, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out, shout out to Beans. Now this is an old interview with Beans. Let's go back. I just want to remind you, this is an old interview. This is when he first came home and all this. I don't hate Jay. That ain't that ain't what this about. I don't hate him, but damn, dog, that's how you feel. I feel as though you owe me a conversation. That's it. You too big to talk to me? You ate my mom oxtails, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you know what I mean? You too big to talk to me, yo? I feel as though I deserve that conversation, yo. Cause at any given time, when we is together, if anything got out of hand, yo, I put my life on the line for that Rockefeller shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck the music shit and battling niggas. It was situations where I had to hold shit down. When security ain't had no burners. Mm -hmm. They just was big. This big in a way for niggas big for nothing. Mm -hmm. You can't box no bullet. You see what I mean? That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Let this marinate. This is an artist slash somebody that looked up to Jay, was ready to ride for Jay. And I know, <coughs> and I know what some people are gonna say. Nah, smoke. He a grown man. This and that. Beanie Siegel was raised by his by, by his sisters. That nigga ain't had no brothers. Yeah, if y'all, I'm I'm a Beanie Siegel fan, so I know his music. He got some. I mean, listen, Beanie Siegel is one of the hottest niggas in hip hop that, that came in hip hop. What we talking about? Definitely one of the top ones in Philly. 
you definitely got to put Beanie Mac up there. He, come on, man. We talking about Broad Street Bully right here. That part. Shout out to Siegel, man. He had nothing but sisters. When he got introduced to Jay-Z, he was a young Broad Street Bully nigga from Philly. Am I lying? What we talking about here? Kicked the freestyle, got signed to Hove after that. Hove seen something in him. Nigga got balls and that nigga look like a bully. What we talking about here? Hov was older. Hov got damn near, I think, what, damn near 10 years over Seagull, probably? Probably about eight, seven years over Seagull. Like, what I'm trying to say is, Hov used people, allegedly, and everything I speak on is alleged. Hov used people from the Dame Dash show that we hear that's going on to the D Haven. List goes on. What we talking about here? The Seagulls. Certain members from the on um, the state property. Oskino, why you think Oskino's dropping this interview? Because he probably tiles. Let me tell you, Oskino never said this back in the days. Y'all can look this up all y'all want right now. This is the only interview I'm gonna see Oskino talking about this situation. That whole because the only one that spoke about the situation that Hove was on the stand and looked at the judge and told the judge, No, I'm not responsible for him. That's exactly what he did, y'all. Paint that picture in your head. Let that marinate. Hove sitting on the stand. Your boss, your CEO of the label that you're signed to, meaning B.D. Siegel, he's sitting right across on the table with his lawyers. Prosecuting all them sitting there. Niggas is all on the, all, all, they all there. This nigga said no, like Oskino said. And Oskino was there. And he said he looked at everybody like they was crazy. Like, nobody ain't going to say nothing. He, just, he sent that man to jail. Nah, smoke. Comment in below and tell me how y'all feel. Y'all telling me that I'm not, t like Oskino said, he ain't had to hold his man hands and none of that. What we talking about? We talking about hoes. You just got to make sure your main artist and your label, the hottest one, you got to make sure he good and get this nigga back on a straight path. Let's continue, man. We ain't done. Smash that like button. You see that like? Smash that like. That junk is free right there. Rockefeller was the rock. The fellas was state prop. It's evident. Jay-Z ain't spit a rap on Hot 9-7 when we was up there tearing that thing up. Jay-Z caught a pop record, Amy. But them street dudes who stayed loyal and held on to it, they held on. Oh, my God. Y'all ain't just hear what, 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 what Mac just said? He listen, I'm a listen, I'm a diehard Jay-Z fan. But I gotta speak, I, I gotta tell the truth where the truth is be told here. What we talking about here? Jay-Z ain't pop, meaning pause, pop in the industry, making making I mean sales platinum off of a single until he made that record Annie. Y'all don't know what Annie, some people are like, yo, what's Annie? What's your the hard knock life? It's the hard knock life. For us, it's that song right there. The Hawk Nine Life song, whatever. Annie, nigga. That's an old school song. He remixed it. That junk popped. That junk, and I remember when it first came out. Everybody was like, yo, this shit sound weird as that. Because it sounded weird. It was something new in the hip hop. Nobody remixed no shit like that. He popped. But before that, he ain't never popped in the industry. It was all about, it was all about Biggie Smalls at that time before he died. Jay ain't never pop until he made Annie. And like Beanie Mac said, nigga, he ain't, them street niggas ain't coming to me and my state property niggas came, meaning that him and state property coming out of Philly. And he ain't lying. Them niggas was making noise. Them niggas was a hot 97 going bar to bar with niggas in New York. What we talking about here? And I can wait. I, listen, I know. I was one of them niggas listening to Hot 97 on the radio when them niggas went up there and they was dropping on bars, dissing the locks, dissing anybody from New York. What am, am I lying? Go do y'all research on YouTube. Put State Property Hot 97 Infamous Freestyle when he first got signed to The Rock. And that's around the time when they just got signed. Them niggas destroyed Hot 97. I was like, yo, who these Philly niggas is? Nigga, Young Chris. All them niggas. Them niggas went on there and just killed. I mean, they, yo, they destroyed it. Freeway. Petey Crack. Like these niggas, bro. Let me tell y'all something. Anything, everything he's spitting, 
It's facts. Let's go back to it. Smash that like button. And if y'all disagree, comment it below and tell me your opinion. Let's get to it, though. Rockefeller was the rock. The fellas was state prop. It's evident. Jay Z ain't spit a rap on Hot 97 when we was up there tearing that thing up. Jay Z caught a pop record, Amy. But them street dudes who stayed loyal and held on to it, they held on to it too because he had a real nigga like me behind him that would have did anything at that time. Even when you dissolve a company, your company give you a severance pay. And the severance pay, what? I'm not even looking for a monetary gift. I'm saying you in a position to put me in a position to get my own money. Then you make lines like I taught them to fish and they want me to cook a, a dish for them. All of this dish for them or they got a dish for him. I ain't asked you to cook nothing for me. All I ask for you to do is point to the lake and every now and then you could have shared the piece of bait, dog. I would have got my own fish. You suck the you out of people like young Chris and, and you yeah. making this facade that you this person. Fat. What we talking about here? You see, Beanie ain't on that no more. Now he, you know, he not me lost. I mean, he he he's he getting older. He he calmed down now. He chilling. But this is all when he first came home off that bed he just did that Oskino just told us. Y'all remember the Beanie Seagull on Jay Z was going back and forth. Them niggas even went. Now we, we ain't done. Smash the like button, man. And now this is the part that I'm telling y'all right here will really rock Beanie Seagull when he was up in that up in that jail. When he seen 50 Cent coming up there visiting his uncle that was doing, he was up there doing it 15, 13 years or something. Let's get to that story. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure y'all share this video. Do me that favor. Me and 50 Uncle was locked up in the same prison. So we were, uh, you know, set up our visits during the same time. And he would come up. He was just for a little quick, Lord. Conversations. What attracted me to Benny Siegel in the beginning? When he was incarcerated, he actually spent a year and a day in a uh, federal penitentiary in New Jersey. While he was there, he was actually in the same penitentiary my uncle was and Michael Marlowe. He'd been incarcerated for 16 years. I, I go see my uncle consistently, so Benny had to feel what it feels like when I walk into the penitentiary on a visit during me selling. 12 million records on Get Rich or Die Trying, and it kind of shakes the building. Even the correctional officers are excited. Wow, 50 cents here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they go, okay, that's cool. I'm going to have to have Jay come see me. And Jay never comes to see him. Oh, my God. And Jay never came to see him. Now, remind y'all, he did a year and some change up in that, and when they when sent his ass to Jay. <clears throat> a year and some change. I think they even gave him a back end number. I think he, he almost did like two. And Jay ain't never come see him. Jay sent this man to jail because he ain't want to be responsible for him acting like he gonna hold his hands. No, we ain't talking about that. You responsible. You the CEO. That's your artist. You got to make sure your artist good. Why would you send your artist to jail? That's the thing I don't get. Y'all want to know why he did that? Because around that time, Jay-Z already planned that he was going to break up that goddamn Rockefeller. He pre-planned this before Dip said it came in the picture. He knew he was going to do this a couple years later, bro. Break up the Rockefeller, man. He just had to do it one by one. Who was the first one? Beanie. Got him up out of here. They started beefing after that. Rockefeller started started shaking. That's when Rockefeller broke up. Who, who side Beanie went to? He went to Dame Dad's side. I'm telling y'all, boy. That boy Hove, he act like he's a beside. I'm telling y'all. Let's continue, man. When Jay got on stage, I just wanted him to see me. I stood in front of the stage. Oh, let me stand right here, big man. Mm. 30 seconds later, 40 security niggas come up in yellow jaggers and black shirts like y'all got to move from this area. So he stood to the side. Then the boot cops and the police come in there. No, y'all got to move out of this area. Like, y'all got to go. Yo, that angle was get <laughs> Beanie Siegel to fuck out this building. Right. Because if I got all these security motherfuckers right here and this nigga standing right in front of me, right. it was uncomfortable. You got to look at it. Beanie Siegel, Rockefeller Records, da -da 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 -da, on the biggest tour, moving around. Bam, he's locked up for an attempted murder. So that tell you, that shit don't mean nothing to me. If it got to go down, it's gonna go the fuck down. I'ma bust your ass. Exactly, Broad Street bully. 
That's what happened. And he told him he wasn't responsible for him. He sent that man to jail for allegedly attempt to murder. That's what he's speaking on the story. I'm telling you, whole damn what, yo, I'm telling you, when, <coughs> when he seen Siegel acting up, going, I like mean, acting up for him and putting in that work besides, like, like Siegel said, besides battle rapping, these battle, these rappers and all that, he was doing shit outside, holding Rockefeller down against New York niggas and other niggas too. And he from Philly. And you sent that man home talking about you ain't responsible for him, but you the boss and the CEO of Rockefeller. Come on, bro. You did that shit for a reason, man. Because ever since that happened, Siegel was never the same after that. What are we talking about here, man? He was never the same because that junk crushed him when he seen 50 Cent even go up there and 50 went to go visit his uncle that was doing 15 years at that time. And you got, you got the nigga, that, like 50 said, bro, I sold all these records, nigga. When Siegel seen me, that junk, it, it, I'm telling you, it messed his mind up. And Jay-Z didn't write to that nigga and, and, and visit and do nothing. You know how much that junk could mess your mind up, bro? And then you hearing that the Rockefeller shit is, is shaky out there while you in jail doing your little almost two years? Your year and some change, whatever? Come on, man. Let's get to it. I didn't, I didn't have the, the, the ambition or the drive, like, to actually be, I knew how to rap, but to set out like, yo, I'm going to be this rapper. I'm going to be a big star. I'm going to do, that wasn't my story. It wasn't the story because he was a young Broad Street bully. That's like when you see, uh, all right, anybody in the streets can relate to it. Any bar, anybody, business people, anything. When you see somebody working hard, you get that person up. You, I mean, you bring them to the team, right? It's kind of like you either you're gonna use them or you're gonna groom them and and, and make them to a, I mean a millionaire and, and and teach them the business. Cause he's the best rapper, he's the second best rapper on my label. And he's the second best worker on my company. So I gotta decide now what I'm gonna do with this nigga. I'm gonna use him if he get out of hand, but I see the loyalty in him. I see the I see the I mean he's very loyal to me. He come to work all the time. If it's the streets, he always out there. He's he's doing he's stepping into any niggas that even mention my name. So it both it go both ways, company, whatever, streets, whatever. But what I mean, what I'm trying to say is, is it's either you're gonna teach them the game or you're gonna use the person and then dead that nigga when the situation happened. Now all of a sudden you ain't responsible for him no more. But he been loyal to you since day one, since he came to your job, or since day one he came to your team. But all of a sudden now you ain't responsible for him no more. After all the crazy stuff he did for you all. Come on, what are we talking about here? From career and the streets. From battling New York niggas that Jay-Z's from that he didn't want to battle the locks and certain other niggas. BD Siegel went after them niggas. Let's continue. Nah, but they pieced it up. Them niggas ain't talked to this day. Max said they ain't had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. He, he said he don't know when the last time they had a conversation, nigga. And this is a recent interview he did a couple of, what, two, one year ago, two years ago, probably a year ago. Let's continue. This is the last one, man. Yeah. But, did, you know, considering the history, some of the we back and forth. We never had the conversation like, what's up, man? What we got going on? We never had that. You've never had that conversation. Nah. Even though you performed at his concert. Yeah. Hmm. It's too bad. I mean, I mean, that all depends on how you look like it. Look at it. I mean, that, I just that, assume since you did the concert, Jay, you guys talked. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, and Jay, just the invite alone. If Jay don't fuck, we not going to fuck with you. Right. So that might have been a conversation. I mean, right. Listen, I had Jazz O here, you know, yeah. uh, about a year ago. And, you know, they had their back and forth. But at one point, there's a picture together. You know what I'm saying? Jay will do certain things that may kind of say, okay, we're good. We don't necessarily yeah. have to have a whole powwow about it, but. Yeah, you know, I'm showing the world that we good. Yeah, I got. That's why I said that that's might. That's what you got. Exactly. That might have been a conversation. And that's the conversation. That's the only conversation he gave that nigga. That's the crazy part. <clears throat> nah, but he invited him to the to perform, nigga. He didn't invite that nigga. Ty, Ty, them niggas. Memphis Bleak invited that nigga. 
Y'all gotta understand that's the way Hove is. Nah, but how you, man, listen. When that nigga performed the last time he performed with Hove on that Rockefeller stage, I mean, it was a couple years ago, whatever, whatever. But that was bleaker than work, man. Hove came before him and left. He got up out of it. That's why he said we never got that chance to sit down and have a one on one conversation to this day. And now you really can't reach Hove. What are we talking about here? Be doing niggas dirty, but let's get the whole point. Let's hear what Hove got to say because he only spoke about this one time. Smash that like button, man. Well, Beanie Siegel at the time, and you can look it up if you like, that just to be honest, uh, was driving two Bentleys. I don't know how it's impossible to drive two cars at one time with his mama in the sticks and selling 800,000 records. I don't know what more can you do for somebody. Um, you know, at that point, what people choose to do when they when they obtain, attain that type of a success, you know, at some point you have to look in the mirror and look at yourself. You know, Beanie Siegel had a, a record deal, a record label, and a clothing line. I mean, it never went platinum, ever. I don't know, in the history of rap, has anyone done so much with so little? So I don't, I don't even know more, what more can you do for a person at that point. A record label, a record deal, that's normal. A record label and a, a clothing line. So if that's not pushing the person, I mean, shit. <laughs> you see how the whole crowd laugh? I'm telling you, yo, people just laugh. Hov's joke story would be funny. But Hov got a point, though. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Hov got a point. I can't disagree with him on that. That's why I said, let me get the Beanie Siegel situation out. Now we're talking about a little bit about home. That's the only time he spoke about the situation and he broke it down. This nigga only went gold. He ain't gold platinum. We know that. But he got a couple of uh, hit features and all that. And I mean, you know, little singles and all that. You see how much money he on um, calculated, 800000 whatever, whatever. He had a clothing line. Okay, we know about that. But we know Siegel wasn't ready for that. He even said on the last interview, hold up. I didn't. I didn't have the 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 ambition or the drive like to actually be I knew how to rap, but to set out like yo, I'm gonna be this rapper, I'm gonna be a big star, I'm gonna do that wasn't my story. And Hov knew that. Cause you you gotta understand, you see that in somebody in the beginning. Like, all right, let me get into the clothing line. But the reason why you did the state property clothing line, Hov now, there's two sides, there's two sides of a story here. Because he had a whole father and also he had Philly. And that was Dame Dash's idea also to stay property. When they dropped the movie, that's when they dropped the clothing line also. So there's two sides of a story, but you definitely got to blame Beanie Siegel for not handling the business. But who is we to say that Beanie had full authority of that state property business and all that? Because I remember when Dame Dad said he was he was handling the majority of that stuff, plus Hove had control of that stuff also. So Hove, you ain't really speaking out the truth on everything, bro. And you gotta understand, this is a young rapper. Just like Hove was a young rapper and he came in the game and he see how niggas did him, he did Beanie Siegel the same way by sending him to jail. And ever since then, his career was never the same. Nah, but Hov ain't got that responsibility. That is your responsibility because you the CEO. You signed that boy. That was a young nigga at that time. Young, wild nigga that was bugging out for you. It was all kumbaya when that nigga was barking at them New York niggas, though. It was all kumbaya when that nigga was allegedly punching niggas in the face and all that, like he said he did for Rockefeller and for Jay-Z. On many states when he used to be going on tours. But it was kumbaya when he was the first nigga to jump out the, jump out the seat, jump out the crew, nigga. And ready to go time. It was cool. Everybody know about Beanie back in the day. He was a wild dude back then. Everybody know that. Why you think they called him Broad Street Bully, man? Come on. He was a wild dude. And he had bars. That's why he said he wasn't ready for that. He wasn't ready at that time. He just said that right there on the clip I just played. So for Hove to say that, come on. Come on, bro. You was big bro to that nigga. That nigga was raised by fucking sisters. Beanie even said that, man. I looked at Hove like my big brother. That's why that shit hurt me when he did that to me. Meaning what I'm trying to say is when he sent Beanie Siegel to jail. When Oskito just said that he was in the court also that day. Talking about I ain't responsible for him. Nigga, you ain't got to hold this nigga hands. Let me tell you something. Hove. Because a couple years later, that's when Rockefeller broke up, too. 
He planned this, man. It was all planned. <laughs> y'all tell me, as a CEO in y'all label, second best rapper on the, under y'all label at that time, nigga you signed, nigga that listened to you, obviously, and I believe that Siegel would have changed if he would have told him, yeah, I got he responsible for you. You know why I think he would have changed? Because you could have took him back to the office, sat that nigga down, and told that nigga in front of his face, this is your last chance. Now, now everything is on my hands with you. Now, if you F up, nigga, I can't help you after this. You on your own. That's all he had to tell Siegel at that time. And I believe Siegel would have straightened up and do it and did what he had to do. But you ain't give him that opportunity, though. Sometimes it takes deep situations to wake somebody up. Am I lying? What are we talking about? Lucky he beat the lucky attempted murder allegedly. You know what I mean? They dropped it, whatever. He ain't had to do a long bid and all that stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Let that marinate, but hold don't do no wrong though, right? Rockefeller was the rock. The fellas was state prop. It's evident. Jay Z ain't spit a rap on Hot 97 when we was up there tearing that thing up. Jay Z caught a pop record, Amy. But them street dudes who stayed loyal and held on to it, they held on to it too because he had a real nigga like me behind him that would have did anything at that time. Even when you dissolve a company, your company give you a severance pay. And the severance pay, what? I'm not even looking for a monetary gift. I'm saying you in a position to put me in a position to get my own money. Then you make lines like I taught them to fish and they want me to cook a, a dish for them. All of this dish for them or they got a dish for him. I ain't asked you to cook nothing for me. All I ask for you to do is point to the lake and every now and then you could have shared the piece of bait, dog. I would have got my own fish. You suck the youth out of people like young Chris and, and you yeah. making this facade that you this person. And that's a fact. Nah, but young Chris mess with Jay. Yeah, he mess with Jay because he ain't got no choice. But nigga, young Chris ain't with Hov and Ty Ty, them niggas every day. What we talking about here? Yo, who young, man, listen, the young Chris and them niggas, young Neef, young Chris, Freeway, PD, all them niggas, that's the state property, man. Seagull was the leader. They all was young boys. Y'all got to understand, this early 2000, beat Seagull was young too, young wild nigga. They know nothing about the business. And he caught, he's not I mean, the only thing he knows about nigga, this my boss, Jay-Z, and niggas talk crazy. We're gonna we're gonna get at y'all. That's all he knew. That's all he knew. And you telling me you couldn't be responsible to hold your orders down, bro? Come on, man. Come on, what we talking about here? And I'm lying, commenting below. You ain't holding this nigga hand. You could have sent him away like, hold up. This is the last. We're going to go back to this last clip. And after this, y'all going to comment below, man. Tell me how y'all feel, man. But don't let me tell you what I saw, bro. I saw, I came to court for beans, right? When he shot that, was that shot, allegedly shot somebody. Jay-Z got on the stand. They said, yo, are you going to be responsible for him if we let you go? Jay-Z said, no. Wait, nah. Wait, what year was this? Bro, I was there. I was there. My son was little. So this is probably like early 2000s. Yeah, I was, I was there. This, this, this ain't hearsay. This is me there in the courtroom. So wait, wait. The judge asked Jay-Z, would he be responsible Be's, for Beans? Be, if, would you be responsible? If we let him go today, would you be responsible for him? He said, no, no. Is this before the success or is this af after the Beans, Beans success? Beans, Beans, he was Beans. He was already did the songs and all that. Yeah, it was success, yeah, success already. And when he, I, I, I was just thinking, like, what did he come to court for then? If you're not going to, if you're going to say that, like, mind you, this is my thing. If I got a homie, all I got to do is say I'm responsible for him to get out. I'm saying it every time because if he kills somebody something, they, he can't charge me with it. I mean, plus I got enough money to put him up somewhere anyway if, if I wanted to. But like, the judge basically just giving up, trying to give him an out to be able to get out. Just say, yeah. He said, no, bro. And I said, and nobody didn't say nothing. Nobody didn't flinch. I'm looking, mind you, I'm a jail nigga, so I'm looking like. Yeah, that's it, bro. I want y'all to comment below. Y'all tell me. <clears throat> That's some that's some shady sh right there, because to me that is, bro. You CEO, you the boss, man. That's the main artist, man. That's like, bro. Come on. Ever since then, Seagull was never the same after that. That's what you call when you use allegedly. And everything I speak on is alleged. 
That's what you call when you use somebody like that, man. And you just let him go after that. You just like, man, I ain't responsible for him no more. After all the dirty work he did for you, though, right? That part. Allegedly. Man, make sure y'all comment. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe, man. Share the video. Do all that, man. Do me a favor. Smash the like button. Support the channel. Y'all already know the vibes. If they know, they know. It's your boy Smoke News TV, man. I'm up out of here. Comment below. Mm-mm-mm.